What's up everybody, it's B from B's B's here, back again with another special edition of the Pre-Roll Review Show. And we've got an extra special guest with us today. It's Chef Anna with The Pot. What's up, what's up man, appreciate you having me. For sure, no doubt, thanks for being on. And um, today we're reviewing some pre-rolls from our friends up north from Red, Red Bud Roots Lab. They're in Williamsburg, Michigan, right outside of Traverse City. You know, they market this stuff as Michigan's premier craft cannabis. So we're gonna okay. put it to the test today okay. and see what it do, see if it's any good. Um, I got two pre-rolls for of uh, Sure Breath for $24. And you know, it's kind of expensive. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. before tax. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So, especially for two pre-rolls. Right, no doubt. You know what I mean? And so, here they are. I'm gonna give you yours because we're having a socially distanced smoke today. <laughs> Isn't this crazy? Yeah, right? Weird. So there, we're in the midst of strange times with COVID and everything just uh, unwind in here. So enjoy that pre-roll, you know, do all your inspections and make sure to check it out, make sure it's solid. And Damn, um, it's 8% THC. Is that what they're saying? Or is it 82? It's either 8.2 or 82, like it's small. So they, <laughs> so they Ooh, uh, I thought it was more than that on the thing, uh, on the, okay. oh well. We'll yeah. see what we got. We'll yeah, see what kind yeah, of effect we'll it how, has. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. So you know how pre-rolls go. Check that out. And at the end of this, we'll give you uh, a chance to rate it okay. 1 to 10. I've never done nothing like this. So, you know, no offense to anybody, but I'm going to be honest. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know yes. That's the whole point. <laughs> okay, for sure. we got to hold these dispensaries accountable for, you know, what they're I putting like in the pre-rolls. A lot of times when I do this show, I'll get like the lowest on the shelf pre-roll to see what they're really trying to sneak over yeah, yeah, on everyone. Yeah, yeah. And, and see what they really think is acceptable. Uh -huh. So yeah, that's what it's all about. So what I'm gonna do first is we're gonna weigh one because they sold it to us as a gram. Okay. And I wanna make sure it's a gram. Absolutely, this is coming in at 1.5. So that's where so it should be at. They hooked you up. They hooked you, weigh mine. Let's that's where, where it should is. be. Weigh mine, let's see where mine is at. Ooh, 1.59. Okay, okay. So they're right there, they passed that test. That's Got the first you. test. And so, you know what, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just start this interview off as I, as I break this down here and we'll take a look at what's inside this one. And you know, I know you were at the Black Lives Matter protest. Mm -hmm. um, you made it down, which is great. Mm -hmm. First of all, you know, Black Lives Matter. I just wanna say that first thing here. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and so you were down at the protest. What was that like? You know, uh, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, um, it's funny. I didn't necessarily have any plans to specifically go out. Um, I, I know after the whole George Floyd um, incident, may he rest in peace, um, I was watching CNN, kind of watching some of the different cities where people were getting out in the streets protesting, whether it be peacefully, violently, whatever uh, whatever it may be. And, uh, you know, they were showing all the different cities and they weren't showing anything from Detroit. So I'm thinking that, you know, Detroit is pretty calm. Now, we had looked it up and um, I think um, our, our state of Michigan, we're in like the 40, the 40s in terms of police brutality and where we rank. So we're low on the list. So that would kind of explain why people aren't going too crazy here. Um, but, um, you know, around midnight, they, they flipped to some live footage from Detroit and it was helicopter footage looking down on the city. I could see the police. I could see all the people. And. Um, you know, I'm just a firm believer that I can't really look at TV and let TV tell me what's what's going on anymore. That was right down the street, so Absolutely. I decided to hop in my car and go down there to see what was really going on. And um, literally that decision um, to get out of bed that night just changed my life. You know what I mean? Like being down there with the people, feeling that energy. Um, the news was giving it a totally different, totally different headline, you know, about violence and, and animosity. And what I saw was people together. What I saw were, were uh, Metro Detroiters um, that were fed up, that were ready to take a stand, you know, that were standing against the police, standing against the brutality um, all over the world. So it just really changed my, my whole mindset about the world we live in. And I'll be 100 percent honest. I've been naive, you know, running the Chef Anna page and you got people that support you, you know, in, in a lot of number. But then when something like this happens, you see some of the same people that's, that were supporting you with these weird views on life. You know what I mean? That's just the best way I can characterize it without offending anybody is these weird views on the way life is. And it's like, wow, I need to, instead of using my platform, I've had people say, you know, you need to get out, get away from the protests and get back to posting pictures of plants. 
to me, that's just like when they told LeBron, you need to shut up and dribble the basketball. So, you know, like that type of stuff right. fires me up. So I'm like, okay, well, I got this platform. I'm a black man. Um, my grandma was born and raised in Selma, Alabama, birthplace of the civil rights movement. I got that kind of blood in me. So I'm not gonna let history pass me by and not use my platform to take a stand, you know? Absolutely, I think um, that's super important. And um, that's a good comparison, like with the whole, Kobe showed up and dribbled the ball kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Know, I think that's a good comparison. Yeah. Because that is exactly what it is. All right, so looking at the herb, I just uh, broke this one open. You know, the, it's pretty finely grained. Yeah. I'm looking at here. They usually are. There's a couple of little stems in here. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. They're pretty small stems. Yeah. But how's your pre-roll feeling over there? It feels super packed, just like any pre-roll I've ever gotten from any dispensary. Um, to, to me, they're always hard to pull, hard to get a, a good drag off of them. So I like to kind of, you know, loosen it up a little bit, kind of press it around in, in a circle. But um, it looks so far like any pre-roll I've ever uh, gotten from a dispensary. This is probably the number one reason why I started growing my own stuff like this, to be 100% honest. Absolutely. But I mean, you know, I'm open-minded. We'll smoke it. We'll see how it smokes and we'll, you know, take it from there. No doubt. Feel free to light up whenever you're ready. Oh, cool. I'm going to get right a now. cutaway here for my people because I'm not going to, so everyone can see at home what we're working with. A nice close-up of this pretty finely grained bud, a few stems. So I'm already thinking about maybe what the grade might be later. <laughs> so yeah, man, that was crazy. I caught your clips when you're down there at the protest. You you brought a plant down, mm -hmm. and um, you were making the cops hold it. What do you think they were thinking when you handed them this plant and you're like, "Let me tie my shoe"? What what was that? What do you think they're thinking? To be honest, I never really know, you know what I mean? Like, and then especially in this, you know, like I said, with me being naive, you just don't know what people are thinking anymore. So right. um, that was my whole goal to capture their reaction, whatever it may have been, whether they, you know, it was a positive one, negative one, or they took it, they arrested me, whatever it was, I was out there to capture that, um, that engage or that, that response from uh, the different officers. And really to just kind of prove a point, you know, I told you I went out that Friday night, that was nighttime. It was, um, you know, it was a little crazy at night, but went out the next day during the day and brought the plan out. And um, it was to show, like, man, it's a lot of people that have had their lives ruined over, over cannabis. A cop pull up and smell weed, all of a sudden you in jail, or you, you know, they busting up your stuff. Like, people right. people have been killed. Philando Castile, they, they blame the smell of weed on why they started that engagement in the first place. So right. um, that's why I brought that out there, man. It's no reason for people to have their lives ruined over, over cannabis. And if I can walk around in front of police officers, giving police officers the plant, walking in front of news cameras, there's families out there, pets. If I can have that plan out there, nobody got hurt, nobody's tripping, um, nobody should be in jail, man. We got to rethink what's going on. Absolutely. We got to go back on these laws and let, let these people go on these nonviolent drug uh, charges. Um, dispro disproportionately, you know, arresting people for this stuff. And mm -hmm. they got to they gotta let these people out. Um, you know, the cops have always done the easy job, you know. Mm -hmm. They go after what they can smell. Mm -hmm. They go after what they can look at and go, oh, you're... Your different skin color, easy, easy arrest. You know they do the easy job. They don't exactly. do the hard job. If they want to go do the hard job, they'd be going after all these guns out here in the street. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Go, go do the real cowboy work. You know, and they're not empowering. Laws aren't put in place to empower police to go after guns and do the do the real crime work. So there's a lot of changes that need to be made. Um, yeah, I agree, 100 percent, man. And um, you know that's the whole reason. Um, you know I was out there doing that. Um, shout out to High Times. I want to spotlight High Times. It's awesome that they picked that up and um, they put it into better words than I did. They gave a list of, um, I want to say it was either eight to ten names on there of, um, of black lives that have been affected by cannabis in a, in a, uh, in a situation with the police. So um, it was awesome to see that. Awesome to be able to uh, use my platform to bring some awareness to that. You know what I mean? There's a lot of black people and minorities that are, again, you know, locked up and having their lives changed just because of um, cannabis. It's not right. But then we have people on the other side that are making a lot of money off the industry um, so you know I, I figure I'm somewhere in the middle of, of uh, kind of bridging that gap and raising awareness and um, I just thought it was awesome man shout out to everybody that understood and no offense to anybody that took it the wrong way yeah no doubt I know you caught some slack online you know kind of some people thinking you're crazy to do that or it was stupid or whatever in my in my mind it's kind of like what every stoner wanted to kind of do at some point in their smoking career is mm -hmm. that yo show that this is just a harmless plant yeah absolutely and, and that was that was that whole point man just to show that it was a harmless plant 
I mean, what more can I, I feel like in terms of that, what more can I do with it? Like, I walked around in front of the police, I put it in police officers' hands, put it in their faces, you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, stop putting people in jail for weed. If I can walk to it, now, granted, I know in Michigan we're a little bit more loose on that because we have recreational, um, you know, laws and whatnot, medical recreational, um, but it's not legal for me to have that plant in public, you know what I mean? Like, and it's, that shouldn't be illegal either, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so, right. um, yeah, man, I just thought that uh, it was something that I could do with my platform. Um, something that I could do in a creative way to, um, you know, spread some awareness on, you know, some of the things that go on for some of the people that don't have a platform or don't have a voice. Right. And I think that's that's the wildest thing about that to me is that you you, you really just wild man doing that because you as a black man, you don't know how the cops are going to really truly react. Mm -hmm. So you were really going down there willing to accept any of everything I, that's something I, to, to this day i say i risk my i put my life on the line for that you know what i mean like it's no telling what could have happened um but i would do it again it's, it meant that much to me uh you know i would talk to my mom and um she you know just kind of asking her you know she was alive during the detroit riots and whatnot so i was just kind of asking her like you know do you kind of remember what that's like what's the vibe now um, what do you think about what's going on today and she you know she said something that stuck out to me she said you know i wish i wasn't so old I was like, what do you mean? She was like, you know, it's you guys' turn now. Like, we were out there, you know, standing mm -hmm. for it. It's, it's sad that we still see that you guys got to fight for that, but you got to get out there and, and do it. And when she said that, I'm like, she's she's fucking right. You know what I'm Can I cuss? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you can cuss. Okay. Yeah, she's right, though. You know what I mean? Like, this is our era. This is our generation. Like, if I don't get out there and use my platform, then you got my children, my grandchildren looking back to this time. It's all documented on my timeline. You can right. look back at this time and you see that I said nothing. That I, You know what I'm saying? Like, no, it's not. that's not going to happen. So... Um, you know, uh, it, it was just something that I felt compelled to do, and um, you know, I figured I'd risk it all for it. You know, so you know, the plant, the herb uh, itself exposes and it has exposed a lot of the systemic problems as you look at it through parallels through other uh, ways it's been treated with capitalism. It's kind of poking a lot of holes in, in that, and with our justice system mm -hmm. and all that, kind of showing how uh, upside down things are really. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been interesting, and I, and I appreciate your activism out there and your passion for the plant. Man. Thank you, I appreciate it. Especially this whole hide and weed in Walmart thing. <laughs> what? If, if for everyone watching that doesn't know, this is one of the reasons why Chef Fan is so big. I mean, to me, what kind of put him on my radar is that he held a contest uh, to where he gave people clues and then hid weed in a Walmart mm -hmm. out here in Metro Detroit. Um, what was the idea behind that? I mean, what gave you that idea? Being bored, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, with the same old, in terms of content, you know, I, I, I consider myself creative and a content creator. So like, when you look at my page, you won't just see pictures of plants, you know what I mean? Like, I try to be creative with, with what I do. I look at it like art. So I was just looking for a way to engage with the people. And to be honest, I didn't know it would be that big. Like, I thought it would be like a quick stash and dash, maybe two or three people come out, one person get it, you know, you know, get. Uh, find the weed, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. better their day or whatever. But when I put the clues out and I went to the Walmart, like I went to Walmart that morning, put the weed in the hiding spots. When I filmed it and put the clues out and when I came, I left, you know, I go home, you know, I'm not staying there all day. So I come back at the time I told people to be there. When I saw that many people in the aisle looking around, I'm like, holy shit, like this is, this is a thing. You know what How I'm many saying? people did you think you had out? The first time, maybe... 15 20 the second time 30 40 that last time when we was in the cereal aisle or i'm sorry the chip aisle it was probably like 40 50 you know what i'm saying like if i had to try to count off the top of my head like 40 people at the least so like that's that's a nice amount of people to come out and be you know in one little area you know kind of looking for something so um yeah man i was just looking for a way to continue my content to continue to evolve my content using cannabis that shit was crazy. I thought that whole Walmart stunt was just wild. Um, I think it's cool that you're kind of doing it in a Walmart, that you chose to do it in a Walmart. Uh -huh. It's like uh, just kind of that capitalism, corporate kind That's exactly of what it is. place. That's exactly what it is, man. It's awesome. I, I appreciate that. It's awesome when people understand and I don't have to explain and you know what I mean? But that's exactly what it is. Fuck Walmart. You know what I'm saying? Like Walmart, man, I, man let me tell you a story about Walmart while we're talking about it. A lot of people, oh, you destroyed the aisle, this, this, and that. Walmart has hourly employees. So when it's time for your shift to leave, you don't have to stay there and clean that aisle. Dip the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we and number two, we didn't make a huge mess like that. But number three, the other day, I go to Walmart just on the on the on the, the, the random uh, me and AP shout out to my wife AP I love her um, we just wanted to get some munchies like we you know all of this store stuff you got to put on a fucking mask to go to the store so we don't go to the store nearly as often anymore we don't have any snacks in the house so we run up to Walmart right 
bunch of snacks in a different cart. Like we were high, so we got random things. This is not an essential cart at all. There are no essential items in my cart. I'm not thinking about that. I'm not processing that. So I'm in line. I see the guy in front of me, um, you know, trying to run his car, trying to get, you know, some diaper wipes. I'm like, damn, if, if that's all he got, I'll get it. Because, A, he's holding up the line. I want to get back home. <laughs> but, B, you know what I'm saying? I could just see the distress on him. Um, oops, he ended up having some, some cash, so he paid for that, so that was fine. Anyway, the guy behind us, he's like, man, look, you got all of that stuff in your cart, man. I remember those days, you know, a couple of weeks back when I had a job still, and I can't, I was just like, damn, it's, it's people hurting out here, right? The cashier at Walmart, right? So we're scanning our stuff, and she's like, wow, like, did some coupons come out? Like, y'all got all these snacks, man, I can't get, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, hold on, wait a minute, like, you work in Walmart, and you, you complaining about not being able to get food? Walmart, fucking take care of your people. You got people in Walmart right now working your register that don't have shit to eat so fuck walmart i'm gonna keep going there and tearing up their aisles that she's standing in the middle of a fucking supermarket and she looking at my cart you know what i'm saying like feeling down and kind of guilt, yeah. guilt tripping me in a funny i get it i get it but she you know guilt tripping me about buying my snacks that's fucked up for walmart to have somebody at their at their register that doesn't know if they're gonna be able to eat or they can't take snacks home for their kids inside of all water everywhere but not a drop to drink that's the kind of society that we've been living in and fuck that that shit is over that shit is over. So I wanted to raise awareness for that lady specifically. I don't know her name, but if she ever sees this, I felt bad for you. Like, I felt that. You know what right. I'm saying? When she was looking at my card and feeling, I felt that, man. You got, that. that's that's terrible. I don't know that that goes on everywhere in Walmart, but that's terrible for a Walmart to have employees that are hungry. Facts. Right, right, absolutely. And I think that's kind of part of why, um, it's not the main reason why uh, people are marching the streets, but that's an underlined issue is that people can't make a living off 40 hours, working 40 hours a week. Exactly. If we could get people making a living being able to make a living off 40 hours a week i believe we'd be living in a better world too. absolutely that's one of the number one things and, and you're right like it you know the george floyd incident happened and you know people got out to protest but like i said it evolved to just feel all injustice people are just fed up it evolved to film all to to, to uh, include all injustice everywhere you know what i mean so right. yeah man exactly. so that's 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 my stance on that man fuck walmart yeah there's george floyd and then there's two hundred thousands of names behind that yes sir wow. We're out in the streets marching. Absolutely. But so. yeah, so I, you know, so the Walmart thing is cool. Um, I don't know how I'll continue to do it with the whole social distancing thing. You can't really bring people together like that anymore, but I'll come up with some creative ways. Right. What do you think about this weed? It doesn't really have a premier cannabis taste. Definitely doesn't have a premium. premier cannabis taste. Um, it doesn't give me a premier cannabis buzz. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, you know, it's like uh, the placebo. Like you just smoke just to be smoking. So like I'm not not enjoying it, but yeah this is it's not standing out for anything yeah the taste and the smell there wasn't no particular taste or smell to this the sure breath um so it is what it is yeah yeah dispensary I'm yeah not no, sure. it's nothing wrong with that man it is what it is um again right. like i don't know why dispensaries pack they pre-roll so tight um if you're watching this and you're not growing your own in michigan you got to be growing your own we got 12 plants anybody can have 12 plants without a license any of that all you got to do is be a resident you got to be growing your own that's what got me off of this how much was this pre-roll uh, 12 dollars 12 dollars man i can give you a seed for five dollars all right you know what i'm saying you take care of that grow that you got five six seven eight nine ten twelve ounces of weed depending on your growth style you know what i'm saying like Absolutely. you need to be great if they're gonna be pushing this i get it if they, but if they're gonna be pushing this on you at the dispensary in my opinion you should be growing your own weed that's just my opinion 24 dollars is gonna go a lot longer with your local grower than it will at your dispensary so i heard uh cali's you know uh grain market is still outperforming the legal market and i think that's probably more common everywhere else too so it is it is what it is but that's kind of the purpose behind this show yeah to kind of show that uh what we're willing to accept uh these dispensaries and allow them to put on the shelves as their pre-rolls yeah i mean and you know how it's business so i'm sure this is shake you know what i'm saying like from the you know right. left or whatever so i get it when it comes to that and like i said i'm not knocking anybody that's buying pre-rolls or anything like that but um, you know, I didn't start where I am right now. You know what I'm saying? Like when I first started, I was in Atlanta. I had moved to Atlanta for a few years and everybody was selling rapper weed is what they called it. Right? Yeah. So right off the gate, you call it rapper weed. You don't even know what it is. That's number one. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. number two, you got to drive an hour to meet the dude. You know what I'm saying? Number yeah. three, it was hella expensive. And yeah. I'm working at Target at the time, putting boxes in the back. So you already know what that's like. You know what I mean? And you spending your money on weed. And I, I was just looking like, man, I, I know it grows. I don't know shit about it, but I know it grows. I know it's nature. So I ordered. I, uh, I didn't buy weed with my next check. I bought seeds. Um, I bought a cheap light. You know what I'm saying? Like you got. It, it just takes a little investment. So you know what I'm saying? I did have to sacrifice not smoking for maybe three, four weeks. You know what I mean? But 
it got me rolling to the point where I have I haven't been in a dispensary. I haven't been inside a dispensary in so long, man. Like right. I, why? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you can put that money. Now there are people that don't have the the, the room to grow or whatever, and they want to buy. That's cool. It's some some for everybody. But if you got the space, if you got the the time, the passion, and you tired of spending all your money um, with the weed man that don't know shit about the weed that he, that he giving you, he got from somebody else that got it from somebody that got it from somebody. Bro, it's time to grow your own shit. Absolutely. Now, what is um, the Chef Anna White Label? That's our auto flower seed boutique. Um, I specialize in auto flowers. So all that is is a cannabis plant that um, it's like it's a bloom cycle is triggered automatically. So you don't have to flip the lights or anything like that. To give you an uh, example, I grow my lights under a 24 hour light cycle, meaning they have light on them at all times from seed to harvest. Generally, you have shorter growth cycles. So um, about a 90 day average is where my plants are, 90 days from seed to harvest. Quality cannabis, especially when grown properly and grown well. And um, it's been hard to get seeds. Uh, you know, a lot of the seed companies the major breeders are overseas spain you know shit like that so um you know things get lost in the mail so what i wanted to do was make it more accessible here you know what i mean like in the country and in, in, in the city so um, we started chef and a white label auto flower seed boutique um, we initially were sourcing seeds from different breeders um, we have now grown to uh, be an actual label where we sign breeders so we have breeders that um, we sign to agreements where they breed seeds for us um, you know we, we stock their seeds so it's growing it hasn't even been a year and it's growing it's taking off so um, wow. I'm excited about it I appreciate you for asking well, now what are some of the pros of growing these auto flowers I see it seems, it seems to be a little more accessible you know I don't know what's what's some of the- in my opinion um, you know I'm a I'm, I've been growing for about I'll be pushing five years in October uh, I've never grown a photo period plant when I was looking into growing and uh, I can't stumbled across auto flowers uh, the size I saw a picture of a small cannabis plant and I'm like that's what I need I, I'm, I'm in Atlanta I'm in an apartment mm-hmm. I don't need these gigantic tree you know what I'm saying like so I saw it and it just it just clicked for me a latch I started looking into auto flowers and I would say some of the pros are things like you can you can grow big bigger autos but some of the pros are if you're in a smaller environment where you're just trying to start off in the closet um, it's gonna stay smaller sized you don't have to worry about light leaks you can start and finish plants in the same space if you got a small space so I can have one flower and I can start a seedling in that same space and I have to worry about you know a flower room veg room um, so it's a lot of pros to it. it. Cons, you would have to ask somebody that, you know, photo grows. I'm sure they're kind of, you can't, you can clone them, but but not like a, tradi- it's not going to be like a traditional photo period clone. Like it's still going to have its life cycle. So it's not going to, you know, it's, it's not necessarily beneficial to clone. They're better for from seed. Then. Yeah, yeah, it's more of a from seed grow. So some people would say that's a con. I personally per- like the from seed journey. Yeah, uh, that's cool to hear. Or what do you wonder? Uh, like a LED inside? Are you in a tent? Or what do you got going on? Started in a closet with a mop bucket, moved to a, a tent, and uh, now I moved to a, what I call my growth studio in the basement. I got a 10 by 12 room, um, and a lot of a lot of when I was building my grow room, I built it live on Instagram, and a lot of people were you know coming at me for not doing the things the most optimum way. Your walls should be this color, the ceiling should be this color. My ceiling is black. My walls, my floor is black black wood waterproof like i I did it because i wanted it to look a certain way you know what i mean like i I, i'm a i'm a big believer in how you feel and the energy and you know what i mean like so when the if you in a good looking studio room like you feel good the plants read up like i mean i'm not a scientist but that's just some of my beliefs so um yeah i got i got a room now with like some satellite tents in other places a garage we're using in some places just to kind of you know i'm not we breed you know just to make some more room for breeding plants and photo uh pheno hunting and shit like that but yeah so i've I've, uh, yeah been from closet to tent to room very cool now so what are some of your biggest tips maybe um for fertilizer are you fertilizing these at all or what how how much fur does the auto need i've tried a few things um i tried the like some organic style bokashi i've tried um uh, i primarily use advanced nutrients so liquid um nutrients and um, yeah, I would say feed them. And there's a lot of myths out there. Auto flowers are sensitive. You can't feed them. You can't top up. Like you could, I, you could beat the, you could beat the plants up. I, I train the shit out of them. I feed them hard, aggressive, um, a lot of nutrients. Um, and you know, in the shows in my grows, you can see bigger plants, bigger dense buds. Um, you caught me between harvest, or we would have, we would have uh, did a live review. Matter of fact, I'll come back and we can do the same thing we're doing here with some of my bud. Um, it yeah. would have been awesome for you to do a comparison to compare the dispensary with something homegrown. But for sure. um. But yeah, so um, yeah, I, I recommend um, 24 hours of light. Personally, that's where I've seen my best, um, you know, uh, results. Nice. Um, and you know the saying, like they got PSI labs on here. I use PSI labs to test mine. 21, yeah. 23. I think my highest is 26.7 percent THC. So like, I, and I'm not a scientist. I I don't know that that is a, a measure for what's better. Mm-hmm. But all I know is if I can look at y'all shelf at the dispensary, see 20s, low 20s, and then I can go send my stuff to the same labs and get mid to high 20s, like. 
what like somebody explain to me where where we are you know what i mean right. like and why why are people not growing it for themselves but i you know i, I don't know right tests are the tac tests are so discretionary it's it, you know it's hard to put a lot of uh, trust in that best thing is just to test it out yourself exactly as mm-hmm. long as you know that uh, and that's the best thing about growing your own stuff is that you know that you didn't spray anything on it you know mm-hmm. exactly what you put in it and so testing it out yourself is the best way to find out and this one says 8.2 percent thc are you do you feel anything uh, where are you at on it i'm not I high i mean i'm i feel like uh this is probably like a cigarettes version of weed or something like a like yeah. a, a low Something that I would go smoke on a smoke break if I was actually working. You don't want to come back in super high. You don't want, like, I feel like I've smoked, but, like, it's not like, oh, man, bro. Yeah. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got a very slight, it's not really heavy. Yeah, um, yeah, I can tell I smoked, but it's not like, it seems like, I feel like I smoked three hours ago. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. I feel like I smoked three hours ago. Right. Yeah, I think I might be busting off this iced coffee a little bit more <laughs> than that. That was the um, Sure Breath from Red Bud Roots. Redbudroots.com. Hashtag Grow Michigan, Michigan's premier craft cannabis. Now, I know some of their top shelf is a lot better than that, but that was a $12 pre-roll. And so. I mean, a lot of it is marketing. Like, you all, you always got to remember a lot. That's a business. So, of course, they're going to put words like premier. No no business is going to use words like standard or words like average. You, of course, they're going to say premier. Um, like you said, you just got to smoke it for yourself and see what you think. No doubt. All right, well... That about does it. So, what do you? What would you rate that? One to ten. How many? Um, how many stars would you give? Out of ten. A one out of ten, considering the best bud, including your homegrown everything. We're taking everything. I mean, as far as what would would this make you get up and go to the dispensary to get Absolutely one? Absolutely not. If I'm going out of ten, I'm down there in the trying to be nice range, three or four. Yes. You know, I'm trying to be nice about it. Yeah, you know, that's funny. When I started these um, reviews, like my reviews kind of started out high. And then as I kept going, I was going, whoa, dude, that was way too nice of a score. Man. Yeah, that's why, that's why I told you. Like, I'm going to be honest. So no offense to, uh, what is the place? It's uh, Red Bud uh, Red Roots. Bud, yeah, no offense. But, I mean, they again, they're a business. They get they get a range of different responses. Some people love this pre-roll. Different, you know what I'm saying? Maybe an older person might be smacked or something. So Right. But for me, I'm gonna give it a if we if we land on a solid score, I'm gonna give him a four for the effort. I'm four for the effort. Four. Yeah, four because it is you know it does have stats on the pre. This is I haven't been to a dispensary in a minute, so is this what they do now? Like they, I, they got the stats, they got the, yep. the day it was tested on there. So I'm giving a couple extra points for that stuff because um you know that's part of the reason why I started growing my own. You don't know if it was tested and all of that, so right. it's like they passed their tests. Yeah, this is marketed as a pretty high end place, so. Um, you know, there's a few stems I pulled out of it, so I'm probably gonna give it like a, probably like a five, five okay. out of ten okay. is where I'm gonna land it. Considering the other scores I've given out, yeah. you know, fortunately the curve keeps going down. Yeah. Uh, so, hey, another verdict here on Bees Bees, everyone. So I gotta thank my guest chef Anna with the pot. He's here. Check out his Instagram. Check out his white label. And uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, don't forget, save the bees, y'all. Save Thanks. the bees. Appreciate you. Chef Anna with the pot. Make sure you follow me on IG, Chef Anna with the pot. I stream weekly. Follow me on Twitch, Chef Anna with the Twitch. Hell yeah. Thanks for tuning, everyone. Peace. <laughs>